I mean, one of the things I would like to know, Charlotte, um, can you tell us something about your own experiences of recreating dances from this period, this early period? Oh, oh goodness, yeah. Hello, hello, Lynn. And thank you once again. And I'm sorry for everybody because you just said Ragged Star, but it has been, I'm so, I just feel so bad that that I've did the lecture, recorded it, and then had to record it. And now I'm sitting in my car, but I will try my very best to answer everything. And thank you so much, HDS, for accommodating. Thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, I started, so basically this came out from um, my work at the Tower of London, actually, well, to, to, and which then extended into Dover Castle. So um, when working on um, sort of site-specific events there, obviously they are both sites that um, uh, are a thousand years old. So they, um, when creating, sometimes we were looking at uh, in England, uh, periods around Edward I um, from the 13th century, uh, periods around um, Richard III. So um, it's, it was sort of, it was born partly out of the requirement of my, of what I was being asked to, to, to do. So um, I, my research started to move away from the recorded sources that we have, the written sources that we have, the established written sources that, that have been found. Um, and it opened up a bit of an area of interest for me because I was thinking, oh, this is, I mean, maybe you got from the talk, I, I do feel, I think I'm very, it's a period that excites me very much. I adore the music from this period and the inter different interpretations from this period. So it sort of started, I, I suppose, and that was maybe the first one I did was maybe 10 years ago maybe a bit longer. Um, then that took me to an ex exploration of uh, what had already been done, what was already out there, the works of, of course, Peggy Dixon and um, uh, the Dolmetsch, the, the, a little bit in Dolmetsch, a little bit in um, Jim Cartmel had done some work as well. And um, only little scraps here and there. And so it was really then working along, as I, I think I impressed in the, in the lecture, this sort of historically informed um, bent we don't know i can't i'm not ever and i would never say this is how these dances were done because we don't know but i do believe that instead of just going well we don't know so we can't do them i firmly believe that we we should at least explore the possibilities um so it really was i started working at stamping number six was my first one um which i choreographed as quite a slow piece um part of that again was inspired inspired from some of the work that Jim Cartmel had done um in playing around with some of the faster rhythms and then slowing it down um then I worked on Calendar Meyer at um uh, Dover Castle so the one of the earliest sort of um what is considered to be in a stampy piece of music with then a word um a true there fit it fits some words around the Vakiris, who who fit some words to the piece of music um and so i created a piece and then my research is bound, bound from there so um i think does that answer the question liz lynn i'm yeah definitely there. yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> actually going on from that actually the next question is it sort of goes on from that one um it's yeah. from catherine tarosi and she says thank you very much for the lecture um thank are you. there any videos of charlotte's dances uh, yes, there are. Goodness. Um, yes, I do. I have I have a really bad video of um, the one that I did at the tower. Actually, this one, the stamping number six, um, really dark because it's very it was done inside the Wakefield Tower at the, uh, at the tower, which is terribly dark. Um, uh, but I do have it. But when I did the first um, lot of research in 2016 for the first Medieval Music in the Dales Festival, uh, which came out of my uh, my thesis research was um, uh, for, for my master's um, then was um, I did five different dances to five of the estampes following those five options so one was sort of a linear sort of stepped similar to I mean the Mignotta the, um, the 15th century Mignotta so I took inspiration from that it's like a sort of a curving swirling um, then I did a sort of study piece I did a, a slower piece I did a, an up-tempo um, fast and I did an, a, a, a no, I wouldn't say improvised, but a slightly um, uh, a less formal piece. So I took lots of the different options 
and experimented with them. And there is a video of the performance. There was myself and two other dancers, um, and Jill and uh, Paul from Trouvert who are playing at the, the Dale. So I've got a recording of that. Um, are there other recordings? There might be other recordings docking, dotting around, but um, uh, but yeah, there's, uh, and there's, um, well, hopefully there'll be next year, there'll be, of course, COVID has put pay to what I was meant to be doing last year, um, but um, with the Chauvency manuscript, um, but uh, hopefully there'll be, that will be a record, properly recorded piece as well. So there are bits and bobs, I just haven't put them up anywhere. Maybe I should. <laughs> so, yeah. Lovely. So we've got it. I don't know quite how to pronounce um, this person's name. Froley. So I apologise if I've got it wrong. Hello, Charlotte. Thank you for a wonderful lecture. I have a question about the Chissonnier de Roy manuscript you showed. Is the picture of the mounted knight supposed to be Trouvert Thibault de Charlemagne? Oh, I don't know. Uh, there, you've got me there, because um, I was really uh, just um, could be. Um, tell you what, Jill will probably know. Jill Page will know. Um, but I was really concerned. My focus was on just those the actual musical dots, and then the um, particularly for the assemblies, there are three other pieces of musicals which aren't which are uh, dance and dance trial, which are in that manuscript as well. But um, the, my focus was not on the iconography in that manuscript because there's not really much dance iconography in it, um, but it was just on the dots. So I don't know. I'm very sorry. I can't answer your question, but I could probably find out. Actually, I think I probably pronounced the name wrongly because I see now it's um, Thibaut, sorry, I missed it now, Thibaut de Champagne. <laughs> yeah. 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 Could be because that's where it was. You know, that's um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So next question is is from art department. Uh, there are so many pictures of solo dancers. Has anyone tried to work with those sources? So, um, that's where I'm going next. Well, solo and solo duet. Um. Certainly the Robodel in uh, Chauvency is a, it, well, it's a duet, but for Shepherd and Shepherdess, but they're cross-dressing, so it's two women, um, but they are dancing very separately, and he describes very, very separate styles of moves um, uh, in that account. Um, again, it could very well be it, that, uh, that there is a, I think by, it could be a solo dance. Uh, in fact, Chapelet starts again in, in, in Chauvency, starts with a solo female performance. And then she's joined by knights who then try and woo her. And they, there's talks of a round and um, flowers and, 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 and things. So I think certainly, per, no, certainly, take, I didn't say that word. There is no certainty whatsoever. I, I think that working with a com, I think all options, which was partly what excites me so much because everything's on the table. So we could say, well, let's see what it works with a with an individual, particularly working with some of the the pattern, the movements that you know that we see as well. So um, uh, I've generally done because of the requirements of my clients, obviously, my what I work, um, the requirements of the court is often groups or couples. Um, less so individual dances, although within that, then there would be individual um, people dancing, dancing the people, people dancing at individual times. So, um, so I certainly use that, but I think all options and, and certainly it's something that I will be exploring eventually whenever we come out of lockdown. So um, with the reconstructions of Robodel and Chapelet. So, um, so yes, uh, so there we go. Hopefully that'll be soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Elizabeth and Bob Lawson have got a question about step dancing. They say, fab lecture, thank you. Have you found any thank evidence you. of step dancing? Oh, step dancing, well, as in clog, like sort of hard shoes, step dancing, clogging, or? Um, Would you like them to unmute? Yeah, if they could like clarify what they mean by, in what yeah. context, what they mean by step dancing. So I'm th I'm thinking of both um, both percussive dancing, but I think the shoes are quite soft then, and probably more what you get with uh, Highland step dancing, uh, the old style where you get uh, movements 
maybe reels, maybe things like that? Uh. No. Well, um, so, uh, yet the shoes, so, the shoes are, are very leather based. Now, patterns, and I'm going to, a costume story would probably pull me up on this, but I think we are early enough for a pair of patterns, of course, which are hard wooden. Um, yes, we are. So there, there would have been hard wooden um, sort of overshoes, um, which people have done experiments on um, that you can dance in. Um, I think Julia Sutton did an exper experiment where she danced in Barbara in the Barbara Ravelhofer book. She's taught so you can dance in patterns, which are hard shoes. So, um, and there are accounts, there are later accounts of people dancing in patterns. Um, so, but formal sort of in what we imagine to be um, sort of like a set choreographed step dance, there is no evidence because there's no choreography written down anyway, but um, uh, what it would be, and I think you, I would say it's probably reaching maybe a little bit too far to say there was a form of formalised step hard shoe dance or a step dance. Um, but that's not to say that it wasn't necessarily created in bespoke choreographies um, or wasn't used in bespoke choreographies. So... I think it's a little far to reach to say that, yes, there was something in the form of a step dance um, but or a hard shoe or something. But I uh, but that's not to say that they didn't necessarily do it. If that helps without being too wishy washy. Thank you. Yeah. OK, I hope that helps. <laughs> and there's some encouraging words to you, Charlotte, um, from Catherine Terosi again. She says, Charlotte, please do put what videos you can on YouTube. This is so helpful, inspires more dancers to get involved in early dance. And I think I'd echo that. Oh, well. bless you. More medieval, <laughs> medieval dance. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you. And then a question from Kate Webb. She says, thanks oh. for providing much th food for thought. I've seen arguments that it is not even certain the estampi is a dance, for example. Oh. Accounts say the musicians played an estampi and then, i.e. afterwards, the people danced. What yeah. do you consider the strongest evidence that it was a dance? Uh, uh, the music. <laughs> that is, uh, that's um, good old Mr Mulally's argument. He, that's where we, I think we do, we, we diverge. So he, yeah, he believes that it isn't that, that one phrase is sort of, you know, there's, has, has decisively said that the estampi isn't a dance that they played in the estampi, and then people went to dance. I think there are other um, occasions. I think it's, to, you, it's so ambiguous. It's so to, to, to sort of take that one, that one couplet, that one sentence and dismiss then that as a dance form. When we have, you know, it, the estampi music in the chansonnier it's a stampy music. Well, sorry, it's dance music, a stampy number one. So, you know, it's, I, I think there is a, uh, uh, enough to say that, uh, to question that it is a dance, that it is a dance form. Again, there's, a, you know, the, 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 um, the, there are other references it to the structure of the, the, the verse and the open and closed endings, um, that I think we would be doing it a disservice if we were to actually say um, it isn't a dance, when I think there's enough out there to say, oh no, it might, it probably, it, it might it at least say, oh, it might have been, we're 50%, it's 50-50. And after all, when they reconstructed um, Rite of Spring, their benchmark is 50% of what you've got. If you've got 50%, then you can then you can work from there. So I think you know if there's at least I personally would go further. I think it's I think it's pretty I think there's enough there to say yes, it was. I think also the ambiguity of they played an estampi and then they danced. Well, it could also be interpreted, well, yeah, they struck up an estampi, and so people then went to dance. So I don't I don't hold with the theory that that one sentence 
therefore dismisses the whole um, option of a, of the, and a stampy being a dance because I think there's more evidence to support that it were, was and I thought and as I say I think if we just took that one sentence in isolation and said oh there you go it's not I think we would be doing it a disservice and um, I think again I will say there is nothing I can say for certain I don't have a time machine but I think if we work from a, an informed perspective from a common sense perspective um there is, you know, this music is labelled as dance music, so common sense would lead me to, to say, well, it's 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 dance music, you know, it's it's music that we can dance to, so therefore, let's have a dance to it. You know, that that's 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 my thoughts anyway. So there we go. Thank you. And finally, um, just a comment from Talitha McKenzie. She says, we have to be careful not to assume that music at that time would have been divided into compartments. Dance and non-dance, um, just, just because we put things in boxes today doesn't necessarily mean that they did then. True, Talitha. Yeah, I, it's, I, I think that's the thing. We need to stop placing um, our modern uh, period heads on it and try and just, it, I just, for me with this, I mean, uh, you know, vibrant, fruitful, inspirational, you know, music uh, uh, accounts, iconography. I think we just, we could, why ignore it? Let's explore it. But explore it with the with the the idea that um, well we may not we may be completely off kilter with it, but at least we've had the opportunity to explore it rather than letting it just sit on the pages and not never be brought to life. So that's or also I will say this as well. This is my one bug bear. Or do something because there are many many medieval reenactment groups or medieval people who recreate the medieval ray of life um yeah and i've seen them at events and then they will do the horses brawl um or they will do washerman's ball or something which we know is not medieval so in that bracket that medieval it's not 13th century we know it comes from our bow in 15 uh, yeah, in, the, in the late 16th century so um uh it you know don't uh don't, don't you I, I i would rather experiment with something that it, and certainly using music from the period rather than say oh well we didn't know what it was so we're going to do something from the late 16th century uh so you know that's that's sort of where i sit i'd rather explore than than gallop <laughs> Oh, I've just seen Talitha's, yeah, all good music is worthy of having movement to it. Absolutely. And there's some really good medieval music. So there we go. Absolutely. Here, here to that. And yeah. we just got one final sort of question and comment from Kate Webb again. Um, she says, <laughs> in what way is it labelled dance music in the manuscript? And she says, of course, I'm in favour of considering it to be dance and trying to bring it to life. Yes. Yes, Kate. Uh, yes, Kate. I think it's just written. To go back, but it's, it's just uh, there's dance, it's dance and dance real, and um, it is, it is. I don't know, I'd have to go back to see what the stamp, but this, I mean, it is written in di different hands actually, as well. So that is a the 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 two, there's two sets of the stampies written, stampy one to four, and one is also very fragmentary, so. That has it's it's a wider can of worms, and the Stampita um, manuscript as well is also, which I think I mentioned in the lecture, is also another separate thing as well. So, um, you know, there is, uh, it's con some of it's conjecture, but as far as I'm aware, it is labelled that it is written as dance. So, okay. so I spelt my name wrong. I think perhaps we'd better bring the session to an end because I'm sure Charlotte wishes to to go home. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm well. I'm still up here actually, so uh, we haven't finished yet. I snipped out to my car. <laughs> That's real dedication, Charlotte, and I'd really like to thank you very much indeed for making such an effort. I love medieval dance. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll say here, here to that as well. So yeah. I'd really like to thank you very much on behalf of everybody who's uh, listened to your lecture tonight for such an interesting and thought provoking thank lecture. You. And also no, for making thank you. And making such an effort also to, to join us for the questions uh, live. Um, we, we really do appreciate that. So thank you very much indeed. No, no, thank you. And thank you very much again for letting me come and uh, rant about medieval dance. <laughs> So thank you. And I'd like to thank everybody who's 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 attended tonight and also come for the, the question and comment session afterwards. Um, just to remind you that the video it is available on YouTube, the video of the of the lecture. And also we have recorded this discussion and uh, question session as well. So that will be on YouTube too, uh, very shortly. Um, and an advert for our next lecture. The next lecture, which is on the 21st of April, again, 7 till 8 p.m. Um, British summertime, though, remember, it's one hour um, plus one hour GMT for those who aren't in the UK. Um, it's Dancing with the Romanovs. Uh, so a completely different subject, but one which is uh, obviously another fascinating subject. And we hope that we will see you there. So thank you very much again, Charlotte, and uh, have a good evening.